divers, Alec Pierce, Alec Pierce Scuba, back again with another tech tip. And this tech tip is another one of those tech tips that is a direct response to some of your questions. Because I've had a lot of people ask me about old regulators and can they get them serviced and where do they get them serviced and whether they should be using them and so on. And the answer is yes, you can get them serviced. And yes, you can use them with some considerations, you know. I mean, I repair a service two hose regulators. And you know, if you've been watching my vintage scuba, or even better, my Sea Hunt Remembered uh, playlist, you know that there's a group, a, a, a big and growing group of divers that dive with nothing but two hose regulators. I have a good friend of mine, he lives in Cincinnati, and he dives summer and winter under the ice, down south, all over the world, nothing but a two hose regulator. Now, he's a bit weird, he's a friend of mine to start with, but uh, the point is that yes, with proper considerations of safety and environmental concerns and so on and well-serviced equipment, you can dive with almost any piece of equipment. However, the particular topic that I want to discuss today is how do you know when it's time to sell, change, exchange, buy a new regulator? How do you know when your regulator is done? When it's time to get rid of it? Well, there's a lot of little things that, that you can look at that will help you make that decision. And it's not a light decision. Now, scuba diving is still very, very inexpensive. I know some of you are going to give me comments about that. But compared to almost any modern sport today, scuba diving is still the best value. Realize you can scuba dive at virtually no cost. It's very inexpensive to scuba dive anywhere, anytime, day or night, all year. There's no sport that gives you that return on your, on your dollar, your leisure dollar. Golfing, my brother just bought a new set of golf clubs. $4,500 for a standard set of golf clubs. And, and you know, you see the signs of the golf courses, pay as you play. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good sign. It's crazy, it really is crazy. Snowmobiling, boating, motorcycling, all of those sports that are exciting. Maybe not as exciting as scuba diving, but they're exciting. I've done almost all of them, but expensive maintenance, insurance, and I want to go into it. Scuba diving is the best return on your leisure dollar for any exciting modern sport that you can look at today. Anyway, uh, so, so changing your regulator is not, uh, not a, a small decision. Regulators range today from, oh, anywhere. You can get a really good brand name regulator for about $300. I just did a tech tip a little while ago, didn't I, Kevin, on, on how much to spend on a regulator. And I think we started at about $300. And you can go up to eight, nine, 10, 11, whatever you want to pay. It depends what you want to pay. And on that tech tip, look back and see if you can find it, uh, folks. You know, I discuss what you get for $300 and what you get at $800 and what the difference is and should you do that. But my point here, however, is you can get a brand spanking new, brand name regulator, full warranty, ready to rock and roll for about 300 bucks. But it's still $300, you know, if you don't need to spend it, why would you? Okay, let me see if I can help a little bit. So let's take a look, first of all, at some older regulators. And I, just because they're older doesn't mean they're not good. Some older regulators and see if I can point out some of the things that you should be aware of, some of the things you can watch for. Okay, now one of the very first things is the knob. The knob on your regulator. If you take a look at the knob on the end of your regulator, if you can grab the knob and take the knob and shake it around, move it around like not back and bend, but shake it side to side and it's loose in there, then that's a good sign that maybe your regulator has had its best diving days behind it. Okay, let me explain why. As you can see, whoops, excuse me one moment. As you can see, <clears throat> the knob has threads, and of course. The yoke has threads. Now, I don't know if you can get in close here, uh, Kevin. Matt, maybe you can actually see some of the problems here. You can see that this regulator and the knob are both pretty crusty. They have been, and, you, and you know, these used to be chrome. I just want to show you a brand new regulator in just a moment. And these, these were all chrome, the threads and everything. But just use, it's been put together under pressure and so on, so that these threads are not getting worn. They're no longer chrome. They're turning into a brassy color, a greeny brassy color. The green is some salt water, but the brassy color is because they're made of brass. That's right, regulars are almost entirely made of marine brass. And then they are chromed, uh, partially chromed for looks, but also partially chromed because chrome itself is a very, very hard so these are actually chrome when they were new. Now from constant wear, they've actually lost a lot of that chrome coating. Big deal. Well, it is a big deal. Let me show you something, okay? Let me, I've made up this little diagram to show you <clears throat> exactly what happens with those threads. Now the top diagram on here, Kevin, I don't know if I can hold this still. The top diagram on here, I tried to draw this so it represents the threads of the yoke knob 
and the threads of the yoke itself. So the yoke knob is, is the black one. That's the yoke knob you turn in and out. The red threads on the bottom, which match, you can see they match almost exactly, uh, is, is the yoke itself. And when the regulator is new, the, you see it's complete mesh. In fact, can you see that blue line in there, Kevin? A little bit of blue in there as well. I just tried to show the contact, but you can see, uh, uh, guys, let me, let me get a pen here. You can see that this black thread of the yoke screw, the knob, and the red thread of the yoke itself, it's almost complete coverage. You see that? I put a little blue in there. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but that shows the extent of the coverage. The threads are almost completely meshed. There's a lot of area that meshes together to keep that assembly snug and safe. Now here's what happens. As you use a regulator, the tops of the threads get worn off. On, on, every time you use it, they wear a little wee bit. So eventually, what will happen is your regulator will look like this. Okay, so this is the same regulator. I've drawn a picture anyway. So the black represents the, the knob, the yoke screw. Okay, and you can see what I've drawn here. I've rounded off the threads, because that's what happens. The sharp edge that used to go way down into the other thread is rounded off now, okay? And similarly, at exactly the same time, because the yoke itself was also made of chrome brass, it wears at exactly the same rate. So you see that they're also rounded off, you see? So now look, look for the blue. You see the amount of blue? Very little. On each and every thread, the amount of actual overlap, or the friction area, if you like, is much, much smaller. So what does that mean? Well, it means a couple of things. First of all, it means that your yoke is going to start to, is going to get loose like this one. And you'll be able to hear that difference in there. Okay. Secondly, and here's where it gets kind of dicey. Eventually what will happen is you're going to put your regulator onto your tank, right? And you're going to turn the valve on, you're going to turn the air on. And all of a sudden there's a great deal of pressure on that yoke on that yoke nut. You know the yoke nut comes through here. Can you see that, Kev? The yoke nut comes through right here. And you turn the air on, there's a lot of pressure on this yoke knob. And it's trying to push that out of there. It will. Eventually, it'll actually push it out. I've had that happen right here at, at the dive store during a training session where our rental regulators, which are used a great deal, they're serviced regularly, but they're used a great deal. And one of these was used so much that these threads, the amount of friction or overlap was so small that when the student, this is particularly bad, scared the heck out of them, when the student turned on the air, bang, and this yoke now flew across the pool. Fortunately, there was nobody standing near. There was nobody hurt. There was no damage done. Everybody was a little bit, oh, what happened? But it was actually not, it was a good learning session is what it was. And we obviously, we quickly replaced that regulator for the student. But that's what can happen. So there's one thing right away. Take a look on your, your regulator that you have and see if the yoke, the knob, is loose in there. Or if you can shake it like that. If it is, take a look at the threads and see if they're clean. Now, what else? Well, the other thing you can do is just generally look at the entire regulator. This regulator is what? Now, here, I'm going to show you a brand new one. Look at this one, Kev. Isn't this nice? I don't want to touch it. This is what a regular looks like when it's brand new. you know, nice and shiny chrome on the second stage. And, and, and the first stage, of course, is, is nice and shiny. I'll take out this knob, and you can see what this knob is supposed to look like when it looked like when it was brand new. <clears throat> and you can see it's clean, first of all. No green. And look at, look at the chrome on it. And the same with the yoke screw in there. You see? The, uh, the uh, yoke, yoke threads, you see? That's the way it should be. And they go together beautifully. They mesh smoothly. And they go in like that, nice and snug and tight, full friction, so it holds really well. But now take a look at this regulator, okay? This is the same second stage, or similar second stage, all chrome. Not many regulators are made like this anymore with lots of chrome, but a lot of them are. A lot of the older ones aren't, maybe yours. You look at the face on the front of it. This used to be a shiny chrome. Now it's all completely scratched. In fact, if you're able to look closely, you can see that it's getting down to the brass. Another couple of years, there's some brass around the edges. Another couple of years, and this, this regulator will be a beautiful brass color. So the chrome has been worn off. Now, are we talking about just cosmetic? Well, this is the outside. But remember, on the inside, there are parts moving back and forth as well. And those parts over the years have probably been serviced a great deal. Every time they're serviced, they are removed and they are cleaned. And, and, and as that happens, through that regular servicing process, which you have to do, uh, again, the parts wear. I've had some divers come in with regulars that were several years old, and by the time we finished servicing them for maybe, I don't know, the 50th or more time, 
a beautiful chrome piece in that valve in the second stage is now almost completely brass. So not only is it undersized, it may not seal properly, but it's an in indication of age. So that's something else to look at. Just look at the outside of your regulator and see if it isn't getting, getting terribly, terribly beat up. All right. Uh, one more I want to show you. Well, a couple more things, actually. Here's another regulator I'd like you to look at. <clears throat> oh, this one right here. Now, this is an old, old regulator. I recognize this regulator. This is a U.S. Divers Aqualung Aquarius. This came out in the 70s. Now, I say that like it's nothing. I was born a long time before the 70s, uh, about 40 years before the 70s. But anyway, this came out in the 70s. It's called the Aquarius. Uh, and a very, very popular regulator. But when I say in sometime in the 70s, you realize that the 70s, that's 45 years ago. You know that, huh? 45 years. You think of anything that you have in the way of sports equipment, particularly extreme sports equipment, particularly sports equipment on which your life may depend that you've been using for 40 to 45 years. Uh, very, very few, I don't think. But anyway, but it's properly serviced and taken care of. This regular will still work. It can be serviced and will still work. So what are we looking at on a reg like this? Well, one of the biggest areas of concern with a regulator are the hoses. The hoses you see are made of rubber. Rubber deteriorates. It, rubber deteriorates in water. Just putting in water is not good for rubber, but that's what we do with rubber. And, and then if you take it down south, the heat and the moisture and the sun, the ultraviolet radiation, all of that contributes to the breakdown of rubber. So eventually this nice soft rubber cover is no longer nice and soft anymore. Now, Kevin, I'm going to get you, if you can, to really, really zoom in here a little bit. I want you to take a close, close look at this rubber fitting, this rubber, where the rubber hose comes out of the metal fitting. Can you get in nice and close right where my finger is there? And are you able to see the cracking in that? All right, let me show you something else. Stay right there. I'm just going to roll it over like this, and I'll show you what happens eventually. <laughs> now, I should point out to you that that rubber coating is really on there for cosmetic purposes more than anything. The actual strength of a hose is in that nylon band in there. That's what actually is makes the hose strong. The rubber coating is really on there just, just for cosmetic purposes. But this is a good indication that that hose, and probably the regulator to which it's attached, has seen its best days, and maybe it's time for a trade-in or a move up to another uh, to, to another model, to a newer model. Here's another example, by the way, <clears throat> of how that brass can be removed. Now, this is not part of a regulator, but this is part of, this is the quick detach for a, a computer, for a gauge or a computer. This goes on to a high-pressure hose, and it goes off and on. And take a look here. This whole thing was beautifully chrome brass. And you can see just from use, how the top part, the chrome has been completely worn off, just from regular use. The diver wasn't doing anything wrong, he was just using it. He's had it for a long, long time. That's all there is to it. So there you go, there's some ideas. I'm going to suggest something to you that some of you may not be completely comfortable with, but you know the best way to know if it's time to change your regulator, to trade up, to look at the new regulator? Speak to your local dive store. Now, I don't know what kind of a relationship you had with your local dive store, and I don't know what your local dive store is like. I'm the first to admit, some dive store owners, some business owners overall, are maybe a little less helpful than they could be. They're more concerned with the bottom line than they are with helping a diver. But if that's the case, then change dive stores if you, if you can. And get to a dive store where the, the, the staff and the owners of the dive store are there to help you to be sure that you have the best equipment and have the most enjoyment from your diving. It works really, really well from a business point of view. I just retired from my business here after 47 years, a very, very successful business, and sold the business and is carrying on wonderfully. And the reason we've been that successful, one reason anyway, is we've always looked out for the diver first. If the diver is happy, has good equipment, and he's enjoying himself, he'll keep coming back. And that's how you build a good business. And I've proven that with our business here. And it works really, really well. You need to find a dive store like that. A dive store that's more concerned with you than with the bottom line. A dive store that will show you different regulators and explain the good and the bad. Look at some of my tech tips and not try to oversell you on something you don't need. If you don't dive very much, if you dive mainly in fresh water, you may not need some peaches that will cost a lot of money. But you should do that. And again, many dive stores will actually give you a trade-in on an old regulator. So if you walked into uh, 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 my dive store and you had this old regulator, I say, well, you know, this is a great regulator. You've had it for a long, long time. It's obviously had a lot of diving. Boy, if it could talk, right? But it may be time for you to think about hanging this regulator up and looking at a new one. How do you feel about that? See what they say. And, 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 and then I would explain, well, you know, what we'll do. 
because you've, you've had a great regulator, a good time with it. What we'll do, we'll take this regulator from you and we'll give you a trade-in credit. It may not be very much, 50 or 100 bucks, but at least you're not throwing it away. And putting that towards a regulator that only costs $300, gosh, now, you know, you know, it almost makes sense. I'm not suggesting, folks, that you throw at your old regulators that are working fine. But I do see a lot of divers out there, and they have old regulators, maybe not serviced as well as they ought to be. They've had them for a long, long time, and they keep diving with them because they're saving a few dollars. Maybe they're saving a few dollars. If you take one of these regulators into a dive store, you're going to find out that maybe that's not the case. They're not saving any money. To repair and some of these rigs, get them back up to good operating condition, safe operating condition, could cost $200. Hold on, you can buy a new rig for that with a trade-in, couldn't you? You see? So think about it carefully, and uh, there's a couple of ideas, things to look at at your regulator to help you decide if it's time to replace it. I hope that helped a little bit, guys. Alec Pierce, Scuba, Tech Tips. Talk to you again real soon.